Hello, the Claude Debussy composition Fat, the second of his Nocturne from the year 1900, is a piece with a remarkable middle section. This video is a detailed analysis of its features, such as the continuous bass pedal point. Find out how the composition approach from the original can be generalized and turned into this piece. Or this funky phrase for big band. In part 1, the focus is on the analysis. In this tutorial we are looking at the middle section of Fête by Claude Debussy, from the orchestral composition Nocturne, dating back to the year 1900. It has a set of characteristics that will be identified in this analysis. The most obvious is the continuous bass pedal point. Debussy puts a limited set of lower chords above this pedal point, then adds melodic material derived from a set of upper layer triads that correspond to specific modal scales. In part 2 I will generalize this approach and use the same musical elements to create two new example compositions. Let's start the analysis by listening to the middle section from FAT. I play a MIDI mockup rendering in order to prevent copyright claims. Read along with the reduced annotated score. This diagram illustrates the ternary form of the middle section. The composition FAT itself also is ternary form, with two similar outer sections. Rehearsal numbers are at the top, measure numbers at the bottom, and I show the chords in both harmony layers. Colored rectangles mark the three subsections that all start with a minor type chord. Both A sections have similar chord progressions and an identical sequence of modal scales. So I label this middle section as ternary A, B, A. Next is the harmonic analysis of the chords that Debussy puts on top of the continuous bass pedal point. That is shown here in staff notation in the harmonic framework reduction of this ternary middle section. How do we determine the key? The key signature shows 5 flats, hinting at a D flat major. With the A flat pedal point we might think that this piece is modal in A flat mixolydian mode. The hypothesis that the pitch A flat is the tonic degree is supported both by its total time integrated duration and by the fact that the opening measures contain two pedal pitches A flat and E flat, the 1 5 pair. The key remains ambiguous until the first chord played by the harp, which is A flat minor with added sixth, the pitch F. 
So now we may conclude that the middle section main key is A flat minor. I say minorish since this piece does not use functional harmony, there are no cadences. It is impressionistic music with floating chords that color this A flat minor key. The overview diagram shows these eight chords in thirds with different chord quality minor, dominant seventh, half diminished, and diminished. The A flat pedal point is a different caudal function of these chords. It may be the root one, third, fifth, or seventh of the chord. Around the same time, Maurice Ravel composed Gaspard de la Nuit, which also has a second movement built around a continuous pedal point. You may compare the analysis of both pieces in my ebook Musical Analysis Visiting the Great Composers. Listen to these eight chords, starting with the two types with the pedal point pitch as the root. The first is A flat minor 6. The enharmonically equivalent root is G sharp, and Debussy uses the half diminished chord, the G sharp minor 7th with flat 5. Next are the two first inversion dominant 7 chords, starting with E dominant 7 over G sharp. And here is the highest tension chord, the inverted E dominant 9 chord. The pitch A flat is the lowered fifth in the second inversion D half diminished chord. Or it is the perfect fifth in the D flat dominant 7 chord. Finally, it may be the minor seventh in the third inversion B flat dominant 7 chord. Or the diminished seventh in the B diminished 7 chord in third inversion. Debussy creates a chord progression from this set of eight chords, as we may now hear in the harmonic framework. Note how he varies the bass chordal function and the chord tension over time. Of course, the transition at the end breaks out of this approach, instead using a set of chromatically descending parallel chords. We return to the chord diagram, in order to mention the generalization of this harmony concept. We may create other chords and thirds on this pedal point, as the top row shows, or even use non-diatonic polychords. However, that is left for part 2 in the series, where I'll demonstrate these alternative options and create short compositions. This harmony approach has two degrees of freedom. We may control the chord stability along the horizontal axis by considering the pedal point pitch as a specific chordal function, where the root obviously yields the most stable chords. Then along the vertical axis we may pick chords with increasing tension level. Thus, although we are not writing functional harmony, there is still, albeit limited, a dissonance control mechanism. In this section the focus is on the chords in the upper layer in Debussy's composition. The lead elements M1 and M2 are for brass and woodwind instruments and are based on sets of upper layer triads. Here are the opening measures of the statement for three muted trumpets, with the upper layer triads in the top staff. Some of these triads are subsets of the lower harmony, such as the A flat minor triad that is contained in the A flat minor 6, or the B minor triad that is included in the G sharp half diminished chord. In other cases, the upper triad is more remote, and combined with the lower layer chords yields an extended or polychord, such as the D flat major over A flat minor 6 chord. I will now play the harmonic framework with combined lower and upper chords.
Next, we interpret these polychord combinations as modal diatonic 7 pitch scales. In the fat middle section, Debussy uses one minor mode, the Dorian, and one major mode, the Mixolydian. That is shown here for the opening main element phrase. And you will discern the overall modal scale pattern in the three subsections, and stopping at the transition. I would now like to share my analysis of detailed orchestration aspects in this piece. I don't think I presented such level of orchestration details before, so I am curious to learn whether you do appreciate this type of information. Please let me know in the comments. We are looking at an overview of the orchestration of the fat middle section. The main elements are shown in red frames, and I tried to still separate the upper and lower layer, although that is somewhat artificial since in the orchestration these may get mixed. The vertical order represents the instrument group voicing, but we'll look at each fragment in detail now. Debussy carefully starts the groove in this rather slow piece. We hear timpani, two harps and low pizzicato strings, laying the background foundation. The first four measures have double pedal point, A flat plus E flat, with an interesting timpani beating pattern. Celli are playing Divisi. When the first harp enters in measure 5, the A flat minor 6 harmony is established. After 16 measures, in measure 132, the E flat pedal stops, while the 8 note rhythmic groove becomes more prominent. The harps and upper cellos play alternating chords with neighboring notes. Inspect the harmony distribution over the two harps. Take a listen to this background element. Next we zoom in on the first main element statement by three muted trumpets in middle register, playing upper layer triads. Playing muted and pianissimo gives the feeling of distance and guarantees balance with the background, not overpowering the soft strings. The setting for subsection B is different, the harps stop playing. In measure 140 the pedal point becomes a quarter note pattern for the anharmonically equivalent pitch G sharp, played by low strings and timpani. Upper strings enter with pizzicato 8 notes and verify the interlocking voicing of violins and violas. There is subtle inner part stepwise motion, gradually the lead is ascending, with continual but limited crescendo. Peu à peu, as the French say.
The main element in the B section is played by woodwinds in six-part sectional harmony voicing with the instrument distribution as shown in the diagram. Here we see the same fragment in staff notation with piccolo and flutes in the mid-high register. Below that, in the case of juxtaposed voicing, are complete triads in the oboes and English horn, with the outer parts doubled by two clarinets. The bassoon plays a single pitch B natural. For a more detailed discussion of sectional harmony and an overview of woodwind voicing techniques, you may want to have a look at my Arranging by Examples ebook. Listen to this woodwind section and note the modal scale changes. The second main element statement in the B section is a call and response setting for three part horns in F and six part woodwinds. Again, this is an example of sectional harmony setting. The lead part in horns is doubled in first and third horn. They play complete triads as do the three bassoons at the bottom of the woodwind section. Now the clarinets are enclosed by flutes and oboes, playing in parallel octaves while the English horn is doubling the lead bassoon. The dynamic level has increased. The second A subsection is a tutti climax with several background and foreground elements. First we look at the background patterns for a pair of horns and two bassoons. The timbres of these instrument types blend easily and it is a standard woodwind brass combination. The voicing type is interlocking. Whereas horns and bassoons play 8th note, 16th note riffs in the middle range, there's another background element. A set of triplet rhythmical patterns for woodwinds in the top register and for celli and timpani at the bottom. The woodwinds are three part, with a lead flute doubled by second flute and an unusual pair of clarinets at the lower octave. The oboe takes the second part. In the arco cellos the triplet patterns are two part. The percussion group now consists of timpani, military drum and cymbal accents. The combination of these two background elements yields cross rhythm. In addition, the harps return with strong plucked chords at the beginning of each fourth measure. In the forte tutti setting, these will hardly be noticed. The main element in this second A subsection is the six part setting for open brass. There are three trumpets and three trombones, the lead a doubling at the parallel octave. Both groups play complete triads. In addition, there is support at the bottom by the tuba, playing A flat pedal point notes. This dotted note triplet phrase has fanfare character.
As if it's not enough already, WC adds another foreground element in this climax section. It is a counter melody in the high strings, a set of modal scalar runs, and in fact a quote from the fat outer sections. Violins 1, 2, and violas play in parallel octaves, with typically around 40 players in a full symphony orchestra. This is the strong sound needed to balance the other elements in this tutti section. The middle section closes with a transition, where a fortissimo 7 part bra setting for 11 players is the main element. They play chromatically descending parallel chords of different quality. The lead trumpet is doubled with unisono oboe and first trombone at the lower octave. Horns are doubling the middle parts, while the tuba is an octave below third trombone. The only instrument continuing the triplet rhythm pedal point is the timpani. The second element in the transition is a unisono string counter melody. All strings are playing descending triplet patterns with unisono violins and violas, cello doubling at the lower octave and basses another octave below. The rhythm obviously gets support from the timpani. After discussing the fat middle section in such detail, it is probably a good idea to play the full orchestra MIDI mockup version once again. Try and recognize the various elements, or better, look for an excellent performance by real musicians. We may generalize this pedal point harmony approach. Returning to the chord diagram, we see the result of the generalization concept at the top, where many more chord options of chords in thirds or even atonal polychords are shown. The application of these is left until part 2 in the series, where I'll demonstrate the application of the WC elements pedal point, harmony in two layers and modal scales in two short example compositions. In summary, this video presents an analysis of the WC fat middle section, in terms of ternary form, bass pedal point and two layers of harmony, of which the upper may be interpreted as equivalent modal scales. 
In addition, we studied the fascinating orchestration of this section in a set of detailed fragments. In the next episode, we return to these elements, present the generalization and the application in two composition examples. Hopefully you picked up something interesting and useful from this tutorial and therefore would like to subscribe to my channel that shares information about music composition and arranging techniques. Feel free to comment, help growing an audience or support my video production efforts by making a PayPal donation. You'll find the link in the description below. Visit the website for companion material, more content and purchasing ebooks. Stay safe and thanks for watching.